one ignoring this rock and roll stuff anymore. Every hotel and club in the country is wiring for information. Hello, Groove Dogs. Welcome to the Runaway Radio Rewind, a program that looks and listens back to the heyday of one of America's truly great radio stations, the legendary and late KLOL. It's the Runaway Radio Rewind. And now, here's your host, Steve Robison. Welcome again to the Runaway Radio Rewind. Great to be with you. I'm Steve Robison. Awesome show today. We're going to hear once again from the Brain Trust of KLOL, Pat Fant. And we have an amazing Uncle Waldo segment for you. But uh, first up, Stevens and Pruitt were some of the best interviewers out there. No matter who they were talking to, they always got more out of their guest than you would expect. Uh, Case in point. The late great comedian and actor Dom DeLuise. It's a classic. Dom with S P on the Runaway Radio Rewind. Enjoy. The legend. Hey. Dom it is. Dom. 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 Look at this. Hi, Dom. girls. How are you? Dom. Dom. It's so Dom. nice to be here. You know, I I came here so I could cough. Are you the boner? <laughs> no, that's the boner oh, that's over the there. Boner. How are you? That's Dom. the boner. Dominic, long, how are you? Long time no stiff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dom. Dom. I'm Dom. What's your name? Kathy. Kathy, nice that's to know Kathy. These are the that's Stevens Terry. and Pruitt, uh, the SMPS. That's another. Also? We have two carries. Right. And, and that's, that's Stacy. Stacy. She's here. cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, she's married. Little thermometers on her. Yeah. On her uh, thing there. Yeah. It's like a turkey's <laughs> Dom, if yeah. you ever get in the mood to see them naked, let me know. They'll take their clothes off. Oh, I would like that. I should, this is good. It's, it's refreshing. If I faint. Somebody has to rub my, uh, rub, rub my, uh, Lori, rub your what? something, rub anything you <laughs> want. <laughs> so I, I don't want to stay fainted If he warm. faints, just rub him somewhere. Yes, Lori, you know you. where. Okay, yeah. good. So, Dom, do you want a chair? One of these? No, no, no. Whoa. Your mother's ass. Hey, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Hey, we Dom got, just we spilled it. his water. That's my <laughs> act. <laughs> yeah, we're on yeah. delay. We, we got, got that. Right, got it. It. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. No, no, but just look at the bottom of this game. See? Yeah, look at that. Oh, All that's right. not fair. Can I give this water back? You know what I mean? It's round. Yeah, it is. You well, can't right, sit down. I'll be okay from now on. Let's have a prayer. Let's all join okay, let's, okay. Let's Well, join. God, get me out of here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't set it down. Set it down. Don't set it down again. It's it has a round the... bottom. You know, you remember Dom, that's at Tito Smallberries. He's, yeah, you know, that's he's, Tito, one of our producers. Wet, he's, you know, you get sparks. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about cleaning you it up. Lose your, uh, Dom, they'll clean it up for you. Don't worry You can that. use your ability to, to get an erection. What's that pill that you uh, take? Viagra. Yeah, Viagra. Viagra I had yeah. some Viagra sent to my home. Uh-huh. And the water, the plumber, oh, it's great food. A little nosh. And and there was no water in the house, so I had to just I I dissolved it in my mouth. Yeah. You know, and I Under had the a, tongue. I had a stiff neck for three ah, days. Ah, yes. Dom Deloise is in town oh, no, because, no, no, no. as the leader in its category and headquartered for over 50 years in Houston, Uncle Ben's Rice is launching its national campaign, a passion and excitement. By yeah, treating oh, its I local grocery Are media. Are kidding? My pockets are filled with Uncle Ben. No, no, that's me. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> by treating its local grocery and media partners to a fun-filled evening featuring award-winning comedian, actor, director, oh, and yeah. probably one of the most exotic loved dancer, comedians. Remember, don't forget, exotic dancer. I did some You do that, too? Dance. There is no exotic, exotic There's no end to your talent. And, 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 no and no end, end to, my... to your ass. Yeah, you're right. Thank you're right. you. By the way, I, I have the map of Europe. Tattooed on my ass. I'd love to show you that later. <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess where Poland is. <laughs> Not only I actor, thought director. you were going to say France, but you know, Poland is good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and one of the best loved people on the planet, Dom DeLuise. And, is uh, he here? That's yeah. you. Oh, I'm so, featured. so pleased. I have all his old clothes. And you are an authored <laughs> chef. And, I, am, uh, I am not often thrilled about guests we have on the show, but I'm thrilled to have you here well, because I'm, I've been I'm a fan happy. of yours forever, and I want to present you with a hat. Oh, I, I, just, I, I know just where I know just this, where to put that. This is an Astro cap that you can oh, have right there. Wow, I, I hope that fits. Old. Let's see. Will it fit? Oh, it's tight. Uh, it's the only thing that I do have <laughs> that's tight. tight. Well, oh, yes. <laughs> hello. <laughs> it looks great on you, Don. Yeah, it, it really does. does. And it? he shopped for days to oh. find just the right gift. This for you. is good. Look at yeah. that. It snugs right onto my head. Oh, I go. love it. Yeah. Yeah. You Makes can let you it think out. Makes you think fast. Makes you think fast. No kidding. Yeah. When you have a uh, tight head, you know how that goes. Could I pass on that? 
You know, <laughs> since you are a featured, you know, an authored chef, yes, you've I'm written books on cooking. Cook. We'll eat this. It'll make you feel better. Uh, and oh, dear. I just, are you, I, there's a double entendre there. Are you and Paul Prudhomme, like, you know, partners? or oh, you share recipes? I, I, he's wonderful. He has all these wonderful spices. People think that's me because I look like him, you know? Yeah, you do kind now, of. Now, when I was in New Orleans, one time I got a uh, what? You're much better looking. Much better looking. Yeah, much that's better right. Looking. God bless you. Much better looking. Right. You know, have some dirty rice. Put and, on my bill. Your autograph is bag. <laughs> and damn near funnier too. That's right. Do you know that I was in a I was in a elevator place? What do you call it? The lobby. Lobby. Yay! Lobby where the elevators this are. Hat's that's making me think. Go, Don, and right? somebody touched my back and said, "Morning, Paul." <laughs> I didn't know who that was. Yeah. Right? Paul. What's that? Yeah. Then another guy comes and says, "Excuse me, Mr. Perdon." Oh, what? He said, I'm trying to get a reservation for your restaurant, which is in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and I was too. And he said, and, and I can't. I need four. A reservation for four. Yeah, and you said. I took a deep breath. I said, ask for me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so that poor guy's still waiting online, yeah. I think. So. <laughs> He's still trying to figure out what the hell happened. One Absolutely. of my favorite movies of all time was The End. Mm. And, uh, oh, yeah, With you movie. and Burt Reynolds. I was great in movie. Burt Reynolds. And, of course, you've been in a lot of movies with Burt. Do you stay in contact? Yes, very good. You know, interestingly enough, Burt went from being a stuntman to a movie star to the right. biggest star in the country. Right. Then he was the top box office star, and then he got a divorce, and he got a little, he had a little trouble, mm -hmm. and he went right into porno. Boogie Nights, and boom, he got an Academy Award nomination. Is that amazing? That's amazing. Right. So I am taking his lead. Really? And I'm going to be making a porno film right oh, here in you're Houston. Kidding. On the roof of this building. No kidding. You're going to do right. it right up here. Right up here, porno film. What are you going to call it? It's called Alone at Last. <laughs> 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 I have to tell you, it's only a three and a half minute film, yeah. but yeah. well, we understand. But I, yeah. I mean, I, and all the camera work is handheld. Yeah. Of course, uh, of course. But yeah. Do it I have to hand. tell you that this film will bring a tear to your eye. I know it did bring a tear to well, my the eye. too close. Oh, please, it was wonderful. You know, and and, and and I don't use any makeup. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's some. I I think it's an adventure that I'm going to take. Alone yeah. at last, no, Dom DeLuise right. in his first triple X rated right. movie. Oh, Dom, home. would you like a chair? Would you like a chair? Sit down. I'd like to take it with me. The chair? Because I, I need a chair at home, but I don't want to sit down now. No, I don't want to sit down, but I mean, if you have any chairs that you don't need. Yeah, you would like to. Because I got, I got one table and one chair, and, and if I have company, you know, I'm stuck. Sure. Yeah. Remember, here, lay watch, on the table. here right. watch this. You keep breaking the like, chairs or something? Well, no, I haven't broken a chair. Oh, I did break a chair one time, and that was not fun. What happened? Because one, the leg went out from under me, and I slowly mm -hmm. sank to the ground. And Mel Brooks was there. He laughed so much that I had to, um, well, I, I mounted him to keep him quiet. <laughs> And he likes this. Yeah, he liked that too. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is, he did not fall asleep. No, no. Well, that's the difference well, between Bert and Mel. I think Mel's much more of a man than Bert. Yeah, he is. He's now, shorter. You can no. find him quicker. You've done several uh, movies with both. Who's more? Check. Who's more fun to work with, Mel or Bert? Well, you know, Mel is like my uh, what's what's the word? Uncle. Because he, yeah, he'll, yeah. he's a short guy, and he says, do it this way. And Bert says, do it however you want. Yeah. So Bert and I have this brother thing, and, you know, we have laughs. Tears run down my face yeah. when I work with yeah. him. Well, you know? Mel's a control freak. He's been on this show before. Yes. And he is definitely a control he freak. He is a control yes. freak, yeah. And, but but, but I like him a lot. You oh, beautiful man. Very beautiful funny man. man. Yeah. And I love his and wife. Doesn't he play the uncle or the grandfather or something yes. on Paul Reiser's show? Yes, right? you yeah. bet. Yeah, with yeah. the one whacked out piece of yeah. hair. I love him. And you watch Riser, he's killing him. You know, Riser can't keep a straight face. It's like uh, Conway and Corman on the old Carol That's Burnett right, show. exactly, yeah. exactly. Same chemistry. Did anybody see... Um... What? Yeah, that was great. Yes. What? Did you I see I was Seinfeld? disappointed, listen. I, oh, thought yeah, that was I, was gonna, I thought that everybody in the world was going to be on the show. It was know, just yeah. a... It, it was it wasn't funny. That it was, was strange. Yeah. The biggest Seinfeld freak that I know, my wife, who watches yeah. every episode, will not accept phone calls or visits. She, my, said my wife was, too, came down and said it was stupid. And do you realize it that, was stupid? And, and yeah. do you so realize? So I put her back in the cellar. Burt Reynolds <laughs> watched it and fell asleep. There you go. <laughs> then we had to slap him. Yeah. Did yeah. Burt have a lot of problems with all of his success, or oh, did yeah, he handle it well? Well, Burt is Bert, Bert, You look. I don't think anybody has a. a you know, a clear uh, shot at, at anything. He, first of all, he was a, what do you call those people who drink a lot? Uh, Alcoholic. Drunk. Drunks. He was a drunk. <laughs> and, and he used to punch people. He'd get into fights all the time. Yeah. Really? So he would cold cock. He cold cocked a, a director one time. You know what it cost him? Two Porsches. Hello. Excuse me. Can oh, he man. say cold cock? Not Hello? in front of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at the well, senses. So, so once in a while, he, you know, he, he, he went through a lot of things. Did he the director? 
Yeah, but the director did some awful things. Did oh, a okay. terrible thing. Yeah. And, you know, I won't go yeah. into it. Yeah. He blamed Bert for firing a guy. And the guy said, why are you firing me? He said, I'm not firing you. And then he went to the director and said, what did you say there for? And he said, Whatever. and then the next thing you know, Pow. the director pushed him and pow, he knocked him down. And then everybody, here's what happened. Bert came back in about two hours later. The director was gone. Yeah. And on the floor, there was a chalk mark where he <laughs> fell. <laughs> and everybody took makeup and they gave they gave themselves a black eye. So everybody had a black eye. <laughs> Dude, that was good. That was good. All right. That's what I got the idea for a hopper. By the way, cold cocked. Cold cocked is not a uh, euphemism for Frank Sinatra's uh, condition. No. Now you want to. Oh. Bra- oh man. Oh Jimmy, oh, Jimmy. Well, yourself. Right. He's, it's too. It's too. It's too. you know, he was a good friend of mine, and he no, was no. a sweet man, and he was a tough guy. You know, because oh, when yeah. I when I spoke to him, I said, "What would your father think when you were singing?" And Frank Sinatra told me the story. He said, "My father said, why did you get a real job? What is this singing stuff you're stuff. doing?' You know, mm-hmm. so." Sinatra said that he was at the Paramount and there were girls that were screaming. Could you scream for me a little bit? Scream. Ah! They were screaming like that Scream. while he was screaming, you know. So he was singing, night and day, you are the one. Ah! Right, that, that's what was going on. But <laughs> multiply that by thousands of people yeah, in the yeah. theater. So Frank Sinatra's father came to hear him. Right. And right. after he, the demonstration in the audience, he oh, came backstage and um, Frank um, said, what would you think? And his father said, I couldn't hear God damn thing, he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank Sinatra died at 82 last night at about 11 o'clock, and uh, his wife was with him. Barbara was there, every, and and the children. Uh, but they're going to have a very private funeral. Yeah, uh, are you, you going to go? Are, the world would want to go. I'm going to go back to California. Yeah, and uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be there to say to pay my respects to him. When I spent the last the last time I saw him was three weeks ago in yeah. his home. And he How was, was he? Uh, what was he like in those? He was uh, he's thin. He was thin. He was uh, failing a little bit. We talked about Gene Kelly. Yeah. And he, he said, and he told me another anecdote that Gene Kelly said, I'll teach you to dance if you teach me to sing. Yeah. And Sinatra said, you might be able to teach me to dance, but I'll never be able to teach you to sing, <laughs> which is what his way of saying that he was a singer and Gene Kelly wasn't, you know? Yes. But he was good. He used to call me Dominic. Hey, Dominic, what do you want to say? I just wanted to, I was reading over uh, your history here, and I didn't realize that one of your first television gigs was on the Sherry Lewis show with Lamb Chop. Really? Did you eat the uh, prop? <laughs> Dom, you are the greatest. You got time for calls? I do. I'd love to talk to somebody. Hold it. Wait, wait. Before we go to the calls, yeah. rice balls. Rice balls are very interesting. Rice because, balls. Uncle Ben cook, rice. Uncle Ben's is great. Yeah. You cook the rice and then you shape it. You put a little egg in it and you shape it into a kind of a half ball. And then in the middle of the ball, before you kind of close it up, you put in a little meat, a little mozzarella. That's the stuff that stretches yeah, yeah, yeah. on pizza. Mm-hmm. Then you, you make it into a ball. You rub it into something called... Egg whites, and then you rub it into breadcrumbs, and then you deep fry it, and it's lovely. And you, in fact, look, I have a couple of rice balls in my pocket. Do I'm going to take really? one. Here's one, <laughs> and here's another one. They're oh, next to nice. his tomatoes. Yeah, be careful if they roll on your feet, you have a little trouble. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But you can you can also put them on a leash and just take them for a walk. Uh huh. Those are nice. Or you can eat them. Right. They're rice really nice. Balls. Stay. Yeah. Stay balls. And oh, look how obedient look at those they are. Balls look. Staying. Look how they look. stay. They're so not they moving. They're not moving. No, no, they up. listen. No, there's a. You you can't have an. A, a rice ball doing whatever he wants. Yeah, can you then get you him? have balls all over the place. Dom, get him to roll over. See if they roll right. over. That's yeah, right. And <laughs> roll over. Balls, go. Ah, oh, oh, beauty. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Very His nice. balls are now rolling can, over on the table. I can leave my balls here because yeah. I have more home. Uh huh. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm, I have one for each of you. A now, wait a minute. I got two for each of you. Oh, way and to go. I got a question for you. You you have a beautiful and special mind, Dom. Yes. Uh, do you have nightmares or weird dreams? I do have nightmares once in a while. I find that this is the worst nightmare in the world. Now, what I'm is, a big guy. What kind I, of dreams do you I'm have? I'm going to tell yeah. you if you just shut up. Okay. Listen to me. <laughs> he never shuts up, Don. He I, just keeps running. A bunch of going. people are saying to me this. They say, lead us out of here. Take us out of here. We're in danger. I say, follow me. So I'm this big guy, right? We go up a spiral staircase. It's pretty dark. When we get to the top, there's a window this big. And I can't fit through the window. And all these people um. are saying, that's a nightmare. <laughs> here they are. They're following me. And the exit is smaller than me. Yeah. And <laughs> Do you all, understand that there's, there's, that's a no-win situation? Yeah, you're, you're trying to get through the window. All they can see is your ass, and they're going... That's right. Fortunately, <laughs> you have the map of Europe, so they know where they're going oh, to get yeah. to. And they know and where nobody Poland... wants to go to oh, Poland. that's a terrible nightmare. Is Poland like a dark spot on the map, or... Is it like Poland it's a, it's is a brown a, spot, Jim? It's a kind of a, a dark spot. Yes, it's a brown spot. Can we on the pass map. over Poland and, and take yes. a call? Let's Go pass ahead. over. I was Poland. trying to, Scott. All this pressure. Hello, Scott. Hey, how's it going? You pretty wanted... good. I'm having a great time. These guys are out of their minds. What oh, do you want? Oh yeah, hey, we deal with them every day, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Stephen's a pretty. Y- y'all are the best, babe. 
But uh, uh, Dom, I need to tell you, I lost I lost my wife every damn day when your son's show would come on, and you know he he almost ended my marriage over that. But uh, no kidding, isn't that? I'll tell him that's sweet. Which one? Twenty one. Hey, what Jump are you Street? talking about? What are you talking about? My son was on a television Jump show Street. called. On what? NYPD. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. The show, 21 Jump Street. No, uh, 21 Jump Street is the one he's talking about with Peter. Yeah, that. Uh, oh. man, I tell you, that's the best thing he ever did for me. Many, yeah, he's I'm, good. I, I'm, and that's I, your son? I got huh? three boys, Peter, Michael, yeah. and David. Are, and they they all, g- are they all actors? They're all actors. Michael's been there. on NYPD Blue, and yeah. now he's a big star on Brooklyn South, exactly. which is an exa- it's a wonderful show. And what's, what's, what's his name? Michael? Michael DeLuise. DeLuise. Yeah, okay. David DeLuise is the baby, and uh, got two kids, and uh, Peter. Nobody took a show business name? <laughs> <laughs> And now that they make money, do they give you, like, really special gifts? He's going to pay. They give you. me special gifts. They leave me alone, and they stop asking for money. <laughs> That's you ought to know that. You have That's three. He gift. has three sons. Yeah. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Scott, what do you do for a living? He's gone. He's gone. He All right. Gone. Bill is waiting, though. Oh, Bill. Hello, Bill. What do you want? Bill just hung uh, up. Bill, Bill hung up. Sorry. Okay, Bill. He was so in awe of you, Dom. He couldn't, couldn't yeah, speak. Yeah, that him. happens. Yeah. Well, we will get to you, and if the line's busy, call back. 390-KLOL. David? You son bitch. Hey. Hey, I'll you know who that was? Jackie Gleason. That was your voice yeah. of Jackie Gleason. Yeah, from Smokey and the Bandit. All right. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey cool. What's shaking, Big Tom? Hey, good. I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did you have a question? We want to talk to Dom about something, or do we hang up? Or on just you? sound effects? No, I, that was just. I thought you guys would like that. I, I did. did. That I was did. good. I with you. Oh, you were wrong. Go ahead. Right. Well, anyway, I, just, I got History of the World was my favorite one from you guys. Yeah. Oh, I had fun with that. Mel Brooks, a very yeah, good time. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite lines. <laughs> now, one of my favorite lines. We had Natalie Wood's daughter on the show. Oh, yeah. You prefer, Have you ever met her? Sure. A really sweet woman. Yeah, I and worked with Natalie in a movie called The, ba- uh, the Last uh, Married Bachelor. Last Married Couple in America. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to argue with you. Yeah. I sort of thought I'd mention it. Yeah. So, you know, is there a chance you're in town for this uh, Uncle Ben's deal? Is there any way that the average person can see you? Or is it sold out? Or well, what's gonna, the venue? No, no, no I don't venue? think they can come to this party because I think it's invited only. But I mean, uh, yeah, if I see anybody I see, I stop the car for. You're having you a do. rice. You're having a rice party, and if you see Dom's limo in town, just wave it down. He'll take you. Over and there. I'll give you Absolutely. a rice boy. Well, keep your eyes open. He's already been to Pepino's. He's been to uh, Ruggles. He, he's a man who likes to eat. You may run into. That's him right. In and then I'm going to go get those things. What do you call those? Kalachis from Kalachi. Shipley's. Kalachi. Thank you, Alan Lumbar. Oh, yeah. oh, those are great. Aren't those good. Mm-hmm. Yes, I squeezed mine too hard, and my little hot dog went <laughs> right out of there. <laughs> Thanks again for tuning in to the Runaway Radio Rewind. If you haven't done so, check out RunawayRadioRewind.com. Pat Fan played the first record ever on KLOL, and he was the captain of the ship for many years. And today we continue our conversation with him on the storied history of a legendary rock and roll radio station. Stevens Pruitt were probably the best known personalities on, um, on KLOL, but there was another sort of rock star personality of the market that you lured over as well, and that was Moby. We had, when we were Billboard Rock Station of the Year in 1970, Stevens and Pruitt were mornings, Dana Steele was midday, Moby was afternoon drive, and Grego was outlaw radio at night. And that was just an unbeatable lineup. Um... Moby was uh, never a good fit at KLOL internally. He was great on the air. He did his afternoon show like he did his morning show on the then defunct 97 Rock. We took him over to KLOL after that went away. But um, what it created was an opportunity for the morning show to make jabs at the afternoon show and then the afternoon show respond and was always a little behind the morning show so stevenson pro would make moby jokes and moby would try to respond in the best way he could to the morning show and he would complain he would call them names and they'd call him names and it made great radio everyone loved it you know when stevenson pruitt would um do the morning contest called Find the Hick in the Woods. They would um, grab the life-size Moby cardboard cutout that we had made for something. They would take it over to Herman Park 
have someone hide it behind one of the trees in Herman Park, and the first uh, listener to find the hick in the woods won a bucket of chicken or something. So this, uh, this showed you the level of uh, expertise that uh, was demonstrated every day by the uh, creative team. I mean, you can, you can tell this is top-notch stuff here. But they, it was so lame. Point is, the stupider, the better. And Jim Pruitt taught us all that uh, priceless uh, rule early on. The stupider, the better. And they did stupid better than, than anyone, really, ever. And so Moby would take offense to this, and then he would respond, and uh, back and forth it would go. And it was just great, great fun and great entertainment. I believe they did the false teeth hunt one morning. The false teeth hunt also in Miller uh, Theater, Herman Park area down in the uh, woods, and the uh, false teeth hunt was a picnic table. Uh, they would say, well, what's happened is we've invited the folks from, from the old folks' home down to, down to the show this morning. Of course, they had not. But, and so they're all out here, and, and we're about to play uh, the false teeth hunt, and you, they all take their teeth out, and they line them up on this picnic table, and then they turn and go back to the starting line, and someone rearranges all the teeth. And then you blow the, the starting whistle, and the first one to make it to the picnic table and find your own teeth was the winner. So, again, the, the level of um, exceptional uh, creativity of this sort of thing uh, misses us all, <laughs> you know. But if you go for stupid... That's about as good as it gets. Was the uh, the back and forth between Steven Pruitt and Moby, how much of it was actual real and how much was radio theater? Uh, they didn't like each other, of course. You know, they were jealous of uh, – uh, Moby was jealous of the boys because they had the morning show spot. And Moby wanted the morning show spot because that's his rightful shift, except not at KLOL. It's not your rightful shift. But he did great for us in the afternoons. Um, but there was always some some animosity, I think. Some uh, uh, not not a not a warmth, not a creative uh, camaraderie. More of a little antagonism on both sides, and they both respected each other. They knew that uh, each show was, you know. <laughs> top of their game in, in, in broadcasting, high personality is what it all was. But now, did they hang out and have beers together? Not really. Thank you, Pat. Well, uh, you want it? You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Uncle Waldo. Uncle Waldo, teenage moron type person. <laughs> This, we couldn't use the original title. <laughs> yeah, we had to change the title. You'll see on. Uh, this script was authored by Janice Little of Dallas, Texas. As a matter of fact, she handed this script to me in a brown paper bag at Packers last night. Uh-oh. Yes. Mail your script in today. You could win some groovies. Time to go <laughs> front row center for Act One, Scene One. Uh, Uncle Waldo, teenage nincompoot moron. <laughs> this is what that says, but go ahead. In Act One, Scene One, a weary big Bruno finds himself out in a cold torrential rainstorm. I said torrential rainstorm. <laughs> Ah. You gotta get Beautiful you. sound effects. Sound God, that's there, so lame. Uh, well, anyway, Big Bruno walks up to the front desk of the local inn. Behind the desk, yes, it's Queen Aretha. She says to Big Bruno, can I help you? Uh, can I help you, Big Bruno? And Big Bruno replies that he's tired, cold, and hungry. He just needs some place to sleep. Yeah, Queen Aretha, I am tired, cold, and hungry, and I need some place to sleep. Queen Aretha replies, Well, baby, I'm sorry I can't help you because there's a convention here in Dallas. 
I think it's an Herbal Life Convention. Every hotel is built, including this one, baby. I'm sorry about that. You're just going to have to... I don't know what you're going to do. Big Bruno insists that he needs somewhere to sleep. Look, I need a room, okay? I'm cold, I'm tired, I'm hungry. Have pity on me, will you? All of a sudden, Queen Aretha gets an idea. Hey, I got an idea. She hands him a pillow and a blanket. He has a pillow and a blanket. She tells Big Bruno to go down the hall. There's a janitor's closet on the right, and he can sleep there. Why don't you do what the announcer just said? That's the only thing I got for you. You mean you want me to go down the hall and sleep in the janitor's closet? That's all I got, baby. Well, okay. Whoa. Big Bruno takes his pillow and his blanket and goes back to sleep in the janitor's closet. Well, time passes, and another weary traveler enters the old inn. Yes, it's our hero, Uncle Waldo. Oh, right. He walks up to the front desk, <laughs> and we hear him say, Uh, yes, baby, what can I do for you? I need a room. I got a... I'm sorry, we don't have no room. How come? Aren't you listening to the radio? Did you hear what the man just said? The whole town is full. We got an Uber Life convention in Dallas, honey. There's no hotel rooms. So I'm sorry. Well, I'll tell you, I'm really weary and tired, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm going to just probably throw up all over your desk if I don't get some... No, now, wait a minute, baby, baby. Listen to me. Listen to me, sweetheart. Listen. Yeah, I got your pillow, and I got your blanket. Now, you've gone down the hall to the janitor's closet. There's already one guy in there, but there's plenty of room for the both of you. You go on down there and have yourself a good night's sleep. It'll be free on me. Oh. Just don't throw up on my shoe. Well, time passes. Of course, Uncle Waldo takes his pillow and blanket and goes to the janitor's closet. Even more time passes. Soon we find our hero returning to the front desk with his head down, circles under his eyes. He's dragging his pillow and blanket, and he returns to the front desk. Yes, baby, what can I do for you? Uh, what is it? What are you doing up in the middle of the night? I, uh, I thought I sent you down to the janitor's closet with your pillow and your blanket. I have a complaint. I uh, What seems to be the problem? Well, I was back there uh, sleeping in the janitor's closet, mm -hmm. and there was this big guy with the deep voice. He uh, That's Mr. Bruno. Yeah, he... He grabs me, you know, puts a headlock on me. No. Yeah, and then pulls out a, a switchblade. Say what? And he says... Oh. That honky had a switchblade? Yeah. And, and, and he says, either you perform... Uh, uh, he says, either you honk my bobo, or I'm going to... Well, Emmy, you know what he did? What? Pull out a gun, too. What? That's right. He wanted you to honk his bobo? Is there a policeman around here? No, wait a minute. Yeah, he pulled a gun on me, too. He had a knife in one hand and a gun in the other. And he said, either I honk his bobo or you'd shoot me. Well, what happened? You didn't hear no gunshots, did you? You've been listening to the Runaway Radio Rewind. Join us next week for more memories and goodness for the intelligentsia from the people who made the former KLOL what it was. Find us online at runawayradiorewind.com. And be sure to grab your Runaway Radio gear. You can find the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. Show us your dog, and we'll see you next week on the Runaway Radio Rewind.